You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Oh my gosh, did everything work? That's so awesome. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to this presentation called Seven Ways to Not Get Hacked. I'm Brian Johnson. Uh, I'm just going to give folks a couple seconds to join here. Uh, if you work in IT and security, you you will, and if you've ever had to like support a presentation or get somebody ready for a presentation, you'll realize that it's like no small feat that all the technical things actually work. So. I know I work in this field. I really shouldn't be impressed when things work, but uh, uh, but they are working. Um, I've got one group that's telling me they're having a little problem uh, with the stream. So let me just address that. Uh, and while I do that, let me entertain you with uh, 45 seconds of something that has nothing to do uh, with security. Okay. And that is um, a video of me indoor skydiving. So one second while I troubleshoot. Okay. Oh, it appears it's kicking in now. Some folks are telling me the YouTube stream did not come up, but then I guess there's just a little bit of a delay. Um, and now things are working great. So, uh, yeah, welcome. I'll let, I'll let this video finish and then we will, we'll get started. I've got kind of an action packed presentation that I hope you'll get a lot of information, uh, out of today. Um, and, uh, this, this presentation is focused on seven things we can all do to reduce our chances of, of getting hacked. Uh, let me just share my screen here so we can start the, the slide deck. And um, these are seven things that, yes, you can apply at work. Like maybe at work they do phishing campaigns or they do uh, you know, other security trainings. So yeah, the stuff you learn today can totally be applied at work. But I also try to make these tips ride the fence a little bit and also help you be more secure in the stuff that you do at home. So really the goal is to help you be a more uh, secure person. All right. Um, just a couple housekeeping things. So I will, um, uh, this will be recorded and this will be available right at this same link. So if you're on YouTube, um, you, and want to catch this later, it'll be recorded. I also do have a handout that I can give you that kind of complements this. So if you ever wanted to use this for a security awareness training kind of thing, um, of course, we'd like you to have seven minute security come in and do it live. But you know we're in Cybersecurity Awareness Month, so if this pre-recorded presentation helps make your employees a bit more secure, that's awesome. That's a that's a win to me. Um, so uh, I'll get my contact information up at the end, and then uh, you know shoot me an email or a direct message on Twitter, something like that, and I'll get you that uh, handout to share uh, at your company. Okay. Um, all right. I think all the tech gremlins are worked out, and I see all the weird live stream things happening. So uh, so let's get into it. Um, I'm going to do just a couple quick introduction slides, just so you know a little bit about me. I, I do know some of you that are virtually joining, but we, we got a lot of folks here, and I know I don't know all of you. So just quick intros to get to know each other, um, and then we're going to just get right into the meat of the matter. Uh, we're going to talk about these seven hacker easy wins, how they keep getting into our accounts, how they keep getting our passwords, keep getting our information, uh, and we're going to talk about how to defend against those. Um, the, the seven things we're going to go to just to kind of give you a, a taste of what's coming. Uh, first, the first point and the one we will spend the most time on is all about passwords, because I can't tell you how many times as a uh, as a security practitioner and somebody who does these ethical hacking exercises where companies hire us to try to break into, you know, their CEO's email or whatever it is. I can't tell you how many people are not using great passwords. So we're going to talk an awful lot about picking bad passwords. Then we're going to talk about something that good passwords pair beautifully with, and that is MFA or multi-factor authentication. Those two are yin and yang. They're uh, Johnny Lawrence and Danielson. They're peanut butter and jelly. They are, I think that's enough examples, but they go together really well. And if you if you stay tuned for just those two points, and then you kind of go into a post or pre-lunch coma, um, I don't want that for you, but I will consider if you walk away with those two tips in your mind, um, that, that that's good. I've done my job. 
for today. But hopefully you will stay tuned for the rest of the tips that'll move a lot faster. Uh, we'll talk about defending your digital identity, much like you would uh, keep tabs on your credit report, for example. Um, it's important we keep tabs on our digital fingerprint and digital identity and know how to uh, monitor and defend that. And I'll give you a few tips on giving your PC some general TLC to keep it from catching colds and viruses and malware. And then we'll talk a bit about backups. Now at your company, you probably have smart IT and security people who back up all your work data. But this tip is specifically aimed at people uh, backing up all those wonderful tax returns and photos and videos and things. Um, th th these backup tips are for you at home, okay? Um, tip number six, that one is my favorite. Uh, that one is about killing your curiosity. Uh, in other words, it's it's being careful with what you click. So um, I, in that in that in that area, I'm going to give you some websites that maybe you would be emailed, uh, maybe you would get in a text message, and you're going to tell me thumbs up, thumbs down, is that link okay to click? All right. Uh, and then the last one we'll uh, we'll do is uh, just a couple tri uh, tips to help you work more securely while uh, traveling. Okay. Um, the, the chat is open. Now we're we're on YouTube. And, and if you're on YouTube, you can participate in the chat. This is also broadcasting a couple other places like Twitter and Facebook. So this software I use, it kind of pools all the comments in one place. But um, I've got hopefully such an action-packed presentation for you that I want to save questions for the end. So certainly comment, talk amongst yourselves in the chat. But um, at the end of the presentation, I'll say, hey, what questions do you have? If you could put them in for the first time or repeat them at that point, then I can uh, answer some questions too. All right. All righty then. Um, so quick introductions. I'm Brian Johnson with 7-Minute Security. We're here in the Twin Cities. Uh, Shakopee specifically is where our uh, worldwide couple hundred square foot headquarters uh, is located. And um, I do security assessments and penetration testing and training with my team here. Um, I also do a podcast of the same name called Seven Minute Security. Um, the, the, the episodes are not seven minutes anymore. They're much longer, but that was the intent behind the podcast. But that comes out every Friday and it's uh, audio only. And it's talking about this kind of stuff um, because all of our work, everything we do, our mission is to help companies and people uh, not get hacked if possible. Also, I, I know this is, you know, going out to the WWW, right? The World Wide Web. I know at least one person was like, dang, I know that guy. I know that guy. He's like super, super famous, right? He was in a super, super famous role. And if you're like, oh my gosh, is that the is that Christmas Caroler number six from the 1996 comedy holiday smash jingle all the way? Yeah. Yeah, it's me, guys. Let that sink in for a second. But uh, I was in a pivotal part of that movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger breaks into Phil Hartman's house to steal the coveted Turbo Man uh, doll, which is kind of like the Cabbage Patch Kid of the season. And uh, man, he's in that house and just mayhem ensues. Stuff catches on fire. He uppercuts a reindeer. And then he kicks this flame statue head out onto the street. And uh, the young lady disappearing off frame to the left there, that's uh, my high school girlfriend and now wife, Amy. And then doing some top-notch acting on the right side there is... is uh, yours truly. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to like turn this into a thing all about, you know, being a celebrity and you know what that's like, but I will let you know that I do have about four pallets of jingle all the VHS tapes that I would love to get rid of because my wife is kind of tired of that taking up space in the garage. They are initial in Sharpie if that increases or decreases the value. So just reach out to me after this, we can, you know, arrange an exchange. On a, on a semi-serious note, though, my wife and I do still, however many years that this is later, I don't do math, so 1996 to today, we're still getting paid for this stinking thing. <laughs> so last year, our uh, our total accumulated royalties were $6.08, but $6.08 times two, okay, which is enough to buy absolutely nothing. Uh, so until that movie career really, really takes off and has some uh, trajectory, I think we'll we'll stick to I will stick to talking about security. Uh, so let's do that. Let's get right into these uh, seven ways to not get hacked. Okay, 
Uh, and the first one, the longest section, arguably the most important today is pick awesome passwords. So I wanna show you a dirty little trick that we use at 7 Minute Security when a company hires us to, for example, try to get into somebody's email account, right? Try to get into the boss's email account. So here's what we do. Uh, what we do is we try to log in to Bob, the CEO's account using a password that we know people tend to love to use. And I'll tell you right now, folks, password one, two, three exclamation is a, is a favorite. It's a classic. Okay. So we'll try that. And if that doesn't work, then we'll just wait a while because what we don't want to do is like lock Bob out of his account. We don't want to set all sorts of alerts and alarms to the uh, IT and security team. We just want to remain under the radar, kind of do this low and slow. Then maybe after a little while, I'll try another password. And here's a crowd favorite as well. P at sign S S W zero R D. People love that password. Okay. And then I just repeat that, that those two steps. Wait, try a password, wait, try a password. And it might be minutes, hours, days, weeks, you know, sometimes even months. But at the end of that exercise, hopefully what I see is something like this. Ah, I got Bob's account. Password was winter 2022 exclamation. Now we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about seasonal years several times in this presentation, but um, I tell you season plus some year is also a, a favorite. So we're going to try those as well. And in this case, we have a winner, but what makes this really devastating is number one, it's simple, right? I could teach my kids to do what I just showed you in about 10 minutes. But what's especially bad is that the bad people know if you use winter 2022 on one of your online accounts, there's a pretty good chance you use it all over the place, right? Your other email accounts, your social media, your bank, your 401k. And so if an attacker gets a hold of one of your online accounts, it can often be very easy for them to get their dirty little hands in a bunch of your online life. Um, and I think a great way to illustrate that is with a real world example. Um, so a number of years ago, there's a government organization that's got a ton of employees, about 20,000, um, and they wanted us to figure out as many of their employee passwords as we, as we could, and we got a one week time limit to do it. So what I did is, you know, went on the internet and, uh, this is a very simple example, but I downloaded millions and millions and millions. I don't know if we got into the billions, but a lot of passwords that we know people love to use and that are not necessarily very secure like this list here. Um, I even found a slightly more, uh, recent example here, top 100 passwords of 2021. Um, but I accumulated them into one giant list. And then what I did is I rented a password cracking machine in the cloud. Okay. In Amazon's uh, internet infrastructure and, uh, took me a couple hours to get everything set up, download the bad word lists. Right. But then my out of pocket expenses were not much at all. Um, 90 cents an hour over seven days of just straight boom, 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 trying passwords cost me 150 bucks. Okay. 150 bucks of dollars, a couple hours of my time, and then just bang it, a bang it, a bang it, a bang it, a 24 seven against these 20,000 user accounts. And at the end of the week, we had gotten into a fourth of the accounts. And uh, these are accounts that control some very important information that you and I care about. And so it was an eye opening exercise for this particular company. So their, ne their, their next and natural question to us was, all right, Brian, we've got a lot of people here that aren't using very strong passwords. Uh, so how do we pick a good password? And I always, you know, there's lots of different trains of thoughts uh, on this, but I always like to tee up this with, let's talk about a couple things uh, that should not be in your password uh, makeup. All right. Um, keep away from using anything that I can easily find on the internet with Google searches and LinkedIn and social media, right? So your name, your mom's maiden name, your address, your employer, those are pretty easy things to figure out if I know your name. So keep those out of your password. Um, and also uh, simple keyboard combinations or walks, they're often called. So if you look at your keyboard and you stick your left hand down, put your left pinky on the A key and then just kind of walk it to the right, that's ASDF, one, two, three, four. Those keyboard walks, those are in those lists of bad passwords that I'm going to use if I'm trying to get into your stuff. 
And also, uh, this is maybe second or third time I've said this, but I'm going to beat a dead horse and tell the whole world is not picking season plus year combinations as their password. Um, this, uh, when we're inside of a company trying to guess uh, passwords, if I do winter 2022 or maybe, you know, the upcoming season or the season before it, I, I got to say it's almost 100% of the time I get somebody's employee account and then I can use that to kind of dumpster dive and get into the company secrets. So let's just all please collectively raise our hand and say, we're not going to use season plus year as a, as a password anymore. The other thing before we talk more about the, the makeup of a password, I just want to give a couple recommendations on where you should not store passwords. Because on, on some of these engagements we do, um, it is a physical hacking exercise. So the organization asks us, hey, can you get access to our building? Can you maybe uh, butter up and sweet talk your way past the visitor desk or the reception area? And, and if we were able to do that and get back into all the cubes where you work, um, one of the first things I do is I uh, feel up behind monitors or I flip them around and then I walk around and I flip over keyboards. And I can say 100% of the time, I find some password to something important. And, and the worst part is sometimes the password itself is a very secure password, um, but it's written right there in a sticky note. And I just pluck it off the monitor and I go log in with it. And then I'm in you know, an HR system or a financial system or something like that. So let's try to get away from, from that. Um, but as it, as it relates to you know, thinking of a good password, um, I am trying to steer people more and more uh, towards pass phrases. OK, so the idea behind a passphrase is you've got uh, several words chained together, maybe put a, a special character or a number at the end. And uh, this site here, this workscited.com, this is a nice one that uh, you visit it and it will generate um, a passphrase for you. So, for example, throw NV parcel remark eight. That is there's a very, very small chance that's going to be in those lists of, of bad you know, easy to guess passwords that I'm going to download. Um, so it's so it's awesome. But um, the problem is, you know, I don't know about you, but I have far too many accounts online. And if I got to like go to this site, generate a new password every time and then figure out some place to store it, that is not a sticky note on my monitor or not under my keyboard. Um, th this this just doesn't scale very well. Right. For all the accounts we need to make uh, passwords for. So what I recommend to people is uh, to consider a password wallet or a password vault. And what you're seeing on your screen here, these are some of the most popular kind of name brand options. So uh, last pass, one password. I've kind of used used them all. They're pretty similar in feature, uh, pretty similar in cost. Um, but just to give you kind of an example of how one of these works. Um, one password is uh, pretty affordable. So it's it's 30 bucks a year for for the whole family. And what's really nice about about that is when when we use this uh, at our house, I have my own little um, bucket, if you will, of passwords for my stuff and for seven minute security work stuff. My wife can have her own individual bucket of accounts she uses for all her things. And then we can share a bucket of passwords between each other. So if we're you know, logging into benefit site and and uh, paying the cable bill, that kind of stuff. You know, we can kind of drop it in one of three uh, buckets. And and if you've not used one before, it it may be a little bit of a different workflow than you're used to. But I think it gets really easy to get used to really quick. Um, so, for example, today, if I went on Twitter and I'm like, all right, I'm making a new new Twitter account called my new cool tweeting account. Um, Obviously, Twitter is going to want me to put a password on this account. And um, when I'm using one of these password vaults, like one password, it'll actually pop up and say, hey, Brian, how about we use exotic towpath aquarium uphold as a secure passphrase instead of, I don't know, winter 2022 or summer 2022. Right. And then all I have to do is say, yeah, save that, save that login. I don't need to remember that exotic towpath aquarium uphold. All I need to remember is my master password that gets me into my vault with all the other passwords. So, so that's handy. But I think where you really see the value in this is next time you go to log into Twitter, your little password vault will pop up and say, oh, I remember this password. Would you like me to just log in with those credentials? And you say, yes, take it away, password vault. And it just auto fills in username, password, logs you in. 
and you're off to tweet about what you ate for dinner last night or other important things. Okay. So they're really cool. Now talking about passwords, the, the, one of the last things I would have mentioned, just cause I, I know this is a longer section, but it's so important as you think about, uh, taking your online life and making sure you have unique, strong passwords or passphrases on all, all those accounts. Don't forget about your wireless. Um, you know, at work, you probably got the smart IT and security people that secure that wireless. But a lot of us are officing out of the home, right? And, um, you know, when you woke up today, maybe you popped open your laptop and we're going to do some work. Um, what what happens when you open up your laptop? Uh, it, it's it's uh, nothing you would ever notice, but there is a little exchange of information between you and your router that gets you online. Um, that is literally called a handshake. OK, so your your computer and the router, they do a little handshake and somewhere scrambled up encrypted inside of that handshake is your actual wireless password that you type in when you're joining a device for the first time. OK, now what's dangerous? The reason I want to bring this to your attention is that if I'm in your driveway or I'm at uh, pulled up at the curb next to your work and I'm in range of your wireless router, um, I can grab a copy of that handshake. It only takes a second or two. You would never know that I did it. You would never know I was there. I can grab that little blob of data, that little handshake. Then I can go home, you know, to my mom's basement where I got my password cracking supercomputer going. And I can just run that little handshake against millions and billions of, of passwords until hopefully I guess the right one. Okay. And, uh, Hopefully, I will see something like this when when the effort is all done. This was actually from an engagement we did a couple of weeks ago, where the wireless password was drum roll please, p at sign s s w zero r d, and to add a, a a side order of nasty sauce to an already nasty situation. Now, if I've got your wireless key, well, I just grab some uh, you know sausage McMuffins from McDonald's and I drive back up to your curb or to your driveway. I join your wireless because I have the, the correct password. And then I can start doing more evil things and trying to hack the rest of your work or your home network. Okay. So that's why it's so important that we use long, strong, complex, unique passwords for all the things that we do. Uh, as a total alternative, if you want to throw out everything that I just said in the last few minutes, um, you could go with uh, this image that I found on Facebook where you could change all your passwords to incorrect so that whenever you forget one, the site will tell you your password is incorrect. I'm not seeing any of you in person, but I assume that at least got one grown. But why do a presentation if you can't insert at least one uh, dad joke, right? All right, so quick pop quiz. Uh, use the chat if you're, if you're a chatting person. Um, pop quiz, a one question pop quiz, and then we'll move on to tip two. Uh, which of the following on that list, A, B, C, D, which password is the strongest? Candidates are option A, password one with an at sign. We got B, winter 2022. We got C, MN, winters are cold. And then we got D, brrr. what do you think? Cast your votes now. It's like American Idol, but not as exciting. This is wonderful. There's quite a spread here. So I'm seeing a lot of uh, votes for C and D, one for B. Let's just talk through them while you and continue to cast your vote if you'd like. Um, a, password one, kind of talked about this one. Um, really, any combination of the word password is going to be in those bad password lists that I told you about. So I would shy away from those. Uh, B is a season plus a year. And I think I've beat a dead horse resurrected it and then beat it down again to say, please don't use seasons plus uh, years as your password. Uh, C is a past phrase, MN winters are cold. And then D, at first glance, and I admit, I did try to, I did try to kind of trick you a little bit. D at first glance does look like a long, I mean, it's the longest one. It looks to be pretty random, but take your, if you got your keyboard hand, handy, Take your keyboard, put it on the one key, and then start typing this password. One Q A Z two W S X. What this is, this is a keyboard walk, like I was talking about before. 
where I gave you the example of ASDF one, two, three, four, that's kind of a left to right walk. This one is the same thing, but it's diagonal and down on your keyboard. So it starts at a number, goes to the lower right, another number, lower right. So it, it looks good on paper, but it is unfortunately likely to be in those lists of bad passwords I would try. So, um, so by that, the, uh, the, the winner is C because it is a pass phrase four words with a special character, not likely to be in, in my word lists. And uh, it's also truthful that uh, Minnesota winters are very cold. So, all right, nice job. Thank you for participating too. That makes it fun, especially when there's not like the face-to-face -face of a living, breathing room. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about multi-factor authentication. And normally I would do like, I would kind of ask a show of hands who was familiar with it. I can't do that. But let's talk about it if you're not familiar. Um, the best way I can think of to describe it is when you you log into some site like Twitter, Facebook, something like that, and you prove you are Brian Johnson or you, you prove you are who you say you are using your password and something else that is bes uh, that is not your password. Okay, so for example, let's say Bob, the CEO, you remember we picked on him and we got his password and it was winter 2022. Let's say he's been through this training. Now he uses a, a nice pass phrase for his password and he wants to add multi-factor authentication to his account. So what he can do is set up the site to do something like send him a text message with a one-time code that he also needs to type in to complete uh, the login. Okay, so that's how I've got this set up. I remember way back in the day, I set this up on my PayPal account because I don't know about you, but I buy a lot of stuff on PayPal. And if somebody in wherever gets my password, I don't want them to be able to buy a bunch of stuff if it's uh, not me. My wife may be being the one exception. But I've got it set up so that if I log in with my username and password, boom, I get a text message. And unless I type that one-time code in, um, the purchase is not going to complete. So that keeps bad guys and gals from getting a hold of my PayPal account and then you know, buying a PS4 or whatever they're going to do. Um, I would highly recommend you turn this on everywhere and anywhere that you can. So on your work email, your personal email, you know, your Gmail, your Yahoo mail, right? Um, and especially your, your uh, social media accounts, because uh, I've had to help a lot of friends and family members who aren't using very good passwords. And somebody guesses those passwords, and then all of a sudden their wall is full of Ray-Ban sunglasses advertisements, right? So you'll, I'll see that and go, oh, I got to give Uncle So-and-So a call because their account got taken over. Um, but I, I just put kind of a, a little menu trail here of where you can find these menus in uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, it's not very hard to set up. It just takes a couple seconds. But what you might find, like I did, is after a while, once I'm turning uh, multi-factor authentication on all over the place, it gets to be a lot of uh, it gets to be a lot of uh, annoyance because I'm getting text messages all the time to type in codes. Um, so I really try to steer people towards using an app, and you can maybe see that on the Twitter screenshot here. You can turn on an app and have your codes get stored there. Um, that is the more secure way to do things, and it just makes it easier uh, throughout the day. So I know at any given time, I can take out my phone, go into log into you know whatever LastPass. And uh, all I have to do is open up the app, check what the code is, type that code in, and I'm off to do LastPass stuff, um, which you can't really maybe see because it's a static screenshot. But this little timer here that looks like a Pac-Man on the right of all these entries, um, those, those are a, a timer. So every 60 or 90 seconds, I think it is, uh, you get a, a new code. So it's, it's pretty awesome. And kind of like with picking better passwords or using a password vault, it's maybe a little bit different workflow than you're used to. And uh, when I've worked with companies on this, sometimes they want to get out the pitchfork and you know set fire to the IT and security folks. Um, but then after just a little bit of time using it, it just becomes second nature. It's about five extra seconds out of your day. And um, the, the, really the big question, the big pushback we get is, is it worth it? You know, Brian, this seems so annoying. I'm a sales guy. I got to sell stuff. I, I ain't got no time to you know, be pushing in codes all day. Well, I usually quote this Microsoft uh, white paper that says, based on their studies, 
your account is almost 100% less likely to be compromised if you use uh, multi-factor. So the answer is yes. I think it's absolutely uh, worth doing anywhere and everywhere you can. So here's the pop quiz to close out this section. I'm going to give you a statement. You're going to give me the answer, OK? Putting multi-factor authentication on all your accounts can cost a little extra time out of your day, but is super duper worth it from a security standpoint. Uh, your choices are A, yes, B, true, C, affirmative, D, you see where this is going, absolutely, E, C. So I'll just wait a minute. Why don't you cast your votes? Yes, I see a vote for F, all of the above. We don't really need to wait for any more votes to come in. <laughs> I was definitely steering you down a certain path with that question. But yes, it's totally, totally worth it. So please do it. Okay, let's get into talking about defending your digital identity. And as I said in the beginning, if you now have fallen into a pre or post lunch coma, and you're like, oh, too much security, boring. Um, that's okay. I hope you aren't doing that. But uh, if you walk away going, you know what, Brian, I'm going to go change my passwords to all be unique and strong um, each online account. And I'm also going to pair that with multi-factor authentication like peanut butter and jelly. Sounds good. God bless you. Uh, have a good day. Uh, for the rest of us, let's talk about defending our digital identity. And I, I don't I don't think I can really recommend a better and freer resource than uh, this haveibeenpwned.com, P-W-N-E-D. Uh, so this is a site that collects information uh, that has been leaked as part of different breaches and hacks. And uh, you can just type in your email address. Go ahead and do it now if you want to. It, it might be interesting. Um, you can see where your email address has shown up in uh, hacked and breached data. So for me, on my personal account, yikes, uh, I've been involved in 16 data breaches. And uh, if we kind of look through these, for example, uh, I was involved in the Bitly, Brit, uh, Bitly breach of 2014. And I just want to highlight here that uh, bad people got away with email addresses, passwords, and usernames. Ooh, okay, that's not incredibly good news, right? And as I look through the rest of the accounts that I've been mentioned in, there's a, there's a theme that's a little unsettling, and there's a theme that we've talked about quite a bit today. Um, the, the bad guy's getting some form of passwords, right? Um, so going back to what I said earlier, uh, you can imagine a situation maybe where, okay, bad guys figure out somehow what my password is to bit.ly. Let's say it's winter 2022 exclamation, right? Well, then I'm back to this situation I was talking about earlier. Yikes. Uh, I got I got my password leaked from Bitly, but now they're in my 401k, they're in my Wells Fargo, they're in my social media, and you know they're holding those accounts hostage or they're stealing sensitive data or, ugh, I'm about to have a really bad day and night and weekend and probably week, <laughs> you know? So uh, this is, again, why I'm, I'm trying to steer you towards making sure you have a unique password everywhere because then it's kind of a contained blast for you, right? If you find out, uh, if you get notification you're on uh, one of these hacked sites, well, go online, change that credential. And then if you use unique passwords everywhere else, you know, you've done about the most uh, you can do. And what's uh, extra cool about this Have I Been Pwned site is, yeah, you can go to it, type in your address, see what your your account has been breached in today, but you can also uh, get notifications for future uh, compromises. So the last one I showed up on uh, was Park Mobile. And I don't know if this is a global app or just a Twin Cities thing, but it's an app that uh, you can use to make parking reservations around the Minneapolis and St. Paul area. And uh, how wonderful. The bad people got away with email addresses, license plates, names, passwords, and phone numbers. And uh, what is really a turd on top of that sandwich is I was never notified by Park Mobile that this happened. Uh, I was notified by this service. So I think it's a great, a great thing to be signed up for so that you're proactively getting notified about your, your uh, information getting leaked. All right, a couple tips here just to protect protect you uh, and your PC as you travel along the World Wide Web. Uh, this is an easy one. 
but uh, in an obvious one, but it's something I still don't see people do incredibly well. And that is let your flipping PC apply the updates. I, I worked for a company a number of years ago where some people in the marketing department, they made it a game to figure out who could not let the updates apply the longest and why I'm sure that game was fun for them. Uh, these updates that, that I know they get really naggy these days, but a lot of them are fixing critical security things. So I like to tell people when you break for lunch, when you are heading home or going to shut down the machine uh, at the end of your workday, hit the restart now, let the updates uh, apply. And uh, that simple thing can keep your, your, your box much more uh, secure. Um, although I do think today, if you, if you run Windows, I feel like Windows is so aggressive. I'm afraid to even step out and use the restroom because I'm afraid it'll be like, Hey, Brian, you there? Oh, no, you're not. Cool. Updates. Boom. And then I'll lose the report I've been working on for four hours. Um, but anyway, you, you get the message. Please apply those, those updates. Um, and if you're uh, any, if there's any Mac fans out there, I think Mac uh, desktops and laptops, I think they make it pretty easy to keep things up to date. There's just one software update section in the settings area where you can just tick all the boxes and just tell it, update my apps. Uh, update, you know, keep the app store updated um, and tick all the boxes, hit OK. And when prompted, you restart and, and you're good to go. Um, all right. This this open DNS is something that, again, if I was in person with you, I'd ask if anybody had heard of it. Uh, this is very, very cool. This is something you can install for your whole household to make everybody more secure in their web browsing. Um, I don't know if I said it's free, but it is. It's free for families. Um, and you just have to make a couple changes on your router. So you might, uh, if you don't know how to do that, might need to grab grab somebody uh, tech savvy. But it only takes a few seconds, and uh, and it's pretty rad. Now to just give you an idea of what this does, I want to get nerdy for like one slide. Okay, just one slide. If I haven't been nerdy enough already, uh, but when you open up your machine and let's say you're going to go to Google to do some searches, type in Google.com. There is something called a DNS server that is sort of like the phone book for the internet. So you want to go to google.com. This DNS server says, oh, I know where that is. It's over here. It's in this uh, server in California. And then off your computer goes, and you can do some wonderful searching for, for fantastic things, OK? Um, when you set up your home router to use this open DNS, DNS server, there's an extra level of protection that is just baked in automatically. So let's say uh, you know one of your teenage kids gets a link to badsite.com, and badsite.com is a bad site, let's say. Okay, this open DNS server, what it's going to do is it's going to act like a phone book. It's going to say, hold on, I'm going to look up and see where badsite.com is. But it's also going to do a reputation check on badsite.com to see if it's known to be a scam, you know, phishing, inappropriate content, you know, whole a whole list of things. And if it is, um, it's going to say, oh, hold hold the phone. This has got a bad reputation. Boom, I'm blocking it. And then what the end user would see is, is something like this. In this case, there was a site that was blocked because it was uh, categorized as uh, naughty content. Um, again, you don't have to install an app on your phone. You don't have to change the configuration of your laptops and desktops. There's just a couple things to change on your home router, and then it protects all devices that connect to your Wi-Fi. Uh, so it's it's free. Um, uh, out of the box, it will protect you against a lot of known malicious and uh, phishing sites. Um, it also, I don't mean to laugh about this, but it reminds me of something. Um, it will block some categories by default. And so I put as kind of a disadvantage, uh, this might confuse family members. And the reason I put that in there is a couple of years ago, I helped the CEO get this configured uh, for his home. And it was like a Sunday night. We did the config. And then the next morning, Monday morning, his teenage son came into the kitchen and said, hey, dad, is our internet broken? A bunch of the sites won't load. And then uh, it caused a bit of an awkward situation between father and son. So I just thought I'd list it in the slide that Potentially, depending on what people are looking at, it may look like the internet is broken. So you need to be ready to have um, some potentially uncomfortable situations. All right. All right. Um, backups. Oh, my goodness. Backups. Ooh, the, 
the kind of bane of my exis existence, but uh, has become so important to me, uh, especially lately. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel like as an IT person, uh, the, the needle keeps moving as far as what I need to recommend for people in relation to their home backups. Because uh, many of my friends, neighbors, relatives, they have scenario one. They have no backups uh, except prayer, I guess. Just praying that that hard drive uh, always stays working because uh, the day it breaks, bye-bye vacation photos, bye-bye uh, years of TurboTax. Uh, you're not getting that back, probably. Um, so finally, you know, years and years I've worked towards getting uh, people I know with at least one backup. You know, you go to Best Buy, you get the Western Digital Passport on the on the end cap. You plug that in and you set up some software to you know back up your stuff every night to that that drive. Um, that's great if you have that. If that's where you're at today, wonderful. But the problem is that this malicious software that you can accidentally run on your system, what it's especially good at these days is it will infect your main hard drive, like on your laptop, scramble that all up, maybe hold it for ransom. Um, but that software is smart enough to go, oh, do I have any drives connected to me? Oh, I do have a passport drive connected? Well, then I'm just going to sink my dirty claws into that and encrypt that as well. So then what you end up with potentially is a, a whole bunch of garbage data that you can't do anything with because your main hard drive is encrypted and your passport uh, is encrypted. Um, so I've been trying to get people more and more towards some sort of hybrid multi-backup solution where if, if you like to have that drive right next to you, you know, backing things up, that's awesome. But then also do some level of cloud backup to like Dropbox, OneDrive, you know, one of those kind of services. Um, as somebody who, uh, who lost their home to a fire a few years ago, uh, I can tell you I was very thankful to be doing cloud backups because, yeah, I had the uh, detachable drive right there backing up all my stuff. But uh, you know what? It doesn't do me any good when it's a pile of uh, cinders. So cloud backups are 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 a good are a good thing to have. Um, th again, there's tons of services that'll do this for you. I just want to tell you about one that I've had some experience with that I like because it's pretty much point and shoot, pretty cheap. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and that is Backblaze. So this is uh, cost you 70 bucks a year per computer. Um, but what's really uh, a cool feature of it is that you install it on your main laptop or desktop, right? But then you can plug in all those passport drives, those little USB thumb drives with photos. You can feed all that stuff to Backblaze and it just nom, 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 nom. It just eats it all up. It'll back up everything again for just 70 bucks a year. Um, a couple other features I like is a free hard drive restore. So they actually have a service where if your laptop, you know, lost in a fire or theft, tornado, whatever, they will ship you a drive with all your data on it. And I believe as long as you ship it back when you're done with the restore, they don't charge you for that. Um, but maybe my favorite feature is the last one. 30 day rollback. So imagine a situation like I just described where all of a sudden, um, I get something icky on my machine. It scrambles up and encrypts all the data on my laptop and on my passport, right? And all I have is, is garbage. I, I have nothing I can use. Um, with this 30-day rollback, you can uh, act like you're in a time machine. You can turn back time uh, up to 30 days back to a time where you had good, clean, working backups, you know, Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and all that. And you can pull down the clean copies uh, and then work with those. Pretty sweet. And I think for, I mean, for 70 bucks a year, again, I tell you, when all my stuff was a pile of ashes, um, was I glad I spent $70 a year to be able to get it all back by just downloading it overnight? Heck yeah. Heck yeah, I was. All right. Last couple tips here. Uh, oh, this one is my favorite. This one is my favorite. Uh, this one is called Kill Your Curiosity also known as uh, be careful what you click. So I'm going to show you a link and let's pretend this came in over an email or a text message, something like that. You're going to tell me whether or not uh, we're okay to click it. All right. Well, let's start with this one. Let's say you get a message that says, Hey, you know what my favorite search engine is google.com. And there's the link. Are we okay to, to click that or tap that? 
and go to Google. This is good. I'm seeing I'm seeing mixed reviews. Uh, oh, you know what I forgot? This is such a professional production here. Let me, uh, I can bring up highlighted comments. Jennifer says, depends on if you hover over it and it actually goes there. Well done, Jennifer. That's true. I, I was trying to trick you a little bit, but let's say we did hover over it and everything's right. All the spelling for everything is right. Um, and then, then we would go to google.com. I don't know if that changes how, how people feel. This is a, a dividing topic. Yeah, I see some people saying don't trust any links. Some saying no, some saying yes. Okay, in general, I'm going to say if you if you give it the sniff test, you hover over it, everything's spelled right. It's the Google we know and love. In general, I'm going to give it a, a, a thumbs up. But let me give you a, a curveball, maybe something a bit more cut and dry. Let's see how you feel about this link. So I write you an email and I say, oh my gosh, you guys, check out 7-Minute Security on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com. How do we feel about that one? Seeing some passionate responses here. Some saying absolutely not. Um, yeah, you're, you're right. We've got, a, we've got a little problem here. If you were to hover over this, uh, right here for book, Facebook, uh, we've got a zero mixed in with an O. So that could take us who knows where. And that is, tell you what, that is a dirty little trick we love to use when companies ask us to send them um, phishing messages. You know, if, they, if their company is company.com, we'll try to buy up the domain company.com, but with a zero instead of a O, and then send messages trying to get people to click stuff. And because we're all in such a hurry, right, just trying to get our stinking work done, uh, it's easy to just gloss over that and go, yep, it looks good, click, and then bad things happen. Um, let me give you one more. Here's a real kind of odd duck one. How do you feel about a Bitly link? I don't know about you, but I still get these a lot, uh, especially from marketing companies where they'll say, you know, come to our uh, company barbecue Friday night. Just register at bit.ly slash something. I see some yeses and nos. Yeah. Mm, eh. You know, it kind of what I'm steering us towards is you kind of don't know sometimes until you click, right? Like you don't know if the gun's loaded until you pull the trigger, but that's not what we want to do. So let me just leave this one as a question mark and uh, I'll just take one for the team. Okay, I'll copy this to my clipboard and uh, let's just let it rip, see, see what happens. All right, let's visit this guy. Okay, so it might have happened even too quick for the stream, but I pasted it in that website, I hit enter, there was a small hesitation, and then I was forwarded to one of the best websites in the world. So what I'm trying to get at is, like I said before, maybe you don't know until you click, but you don't want to click if you feel at all icky about something. So here's a free resource. I love this tool. This is sitting in my bookmarks. Uh, this is a tool called Site Check from a company called Securi. So what this does is if you've got a website you feel mm, about, go to this, this website, paste in this URL, hit scan website, and then it will go off on your behalf and check it out, do a little investigation and report back in a couple seconds. So if we would have used that bit.ly weird link on this website, uh, it would have come back and given us a, a bit of a report card here saying we didn't find any malware, the site doesn't appear to be blacklisted. We're going to give it a low security risk score, and we don't see malware detected. We don't see spam. It's not perfect, right? It's not a silver bullet, but it's a it's a quick, easy tool we can use to at least make a bit more of an informed decision before we maybe click something icky. Um, but going back to what what, uh, what some of you were saying, other techniques, right, to give to give links the the sniff test. The, the hover over technique generally works pretty well. So in this case, uh, this ADP payroll <laughs> link would take us to goldenangelspa.com, which maybe we want to look at after hours, but that's your business, not mine. 
Um, but this is not payroll related, I think we can confidently say. So that's a no. Um, another thing I tell people when they get these uh, SMS messages from Wells Fargo or US Bank saying, OMG, your account is overdrawn. The bad guys have all your money. Click here to start the account recovery process. Don't click or call anything. Go right to the browser, type in your financial institution, hit enter, log in, and, and let that be your kind of sanity check as to whether you were really hacked or your money has really gotten. Um, I, I don't know about you. I just wanted to put a couple of these in here. I'm not getting as much email uh, spam recently, but I am getting a garbage truck load of SMS spam. So here's one for the US Postal Service. Here's one for Amazon, you know, with, with weird phone numbers, weird links. Uh, but I wanted to show you one in, in, in uh, particular that I got to throw myself under the bus here. I almost clicked this one because I happened to, to log into a Wells Fargo account and move some money around. And 10 minutes later, I got this text message. And if you would have seen it, it would have been like a like a action movie where my thumb, you know, slow motion was about to tap this link. And then I realized, whoa, wait a minute. Wells Fargo alerts with a zero instead of an O. And wait a minute, what's what's go.ly? That kind of looks like bit.ly. So when you get this kind of stuff, you can do some quick detective work to make a, a good informed decision on what's happening. So the first thing I did is I took that 808 phone number and I just did a quick Google search on it. And it comes up with one result from that uh, OK Caller site you've probably landed on uh, once or twice. That kind of is a um, sort of like a global caller ID system. So it's got one result. That's not real encouraging. And then my next search was, what is the actual Wells Fargo fraud number? Uh, and Google knows very well, top result. Here's what the number is. I gave him a call and, you know, just a, a quick sanity check. I knew it was likely bogus, but I wanted to make sure. And they said, yep, it's just a, it's just a, you know, spam spoof scam. Just move on with your life. And of course, using that trick, we just learned from uh, the site check, copy that link. If I would have uh, pasted that into, uh, the site check security site. Um, oh my gosh, they rate that as a critical. Auga, auga, don't go there. Blacklisted, we don't like it. So all those things together would help me, you know, help me make a decision on this is this is BS. Um, all right, let's see. We've just got a few minutes left and we're on the last tip. Uh, please get your questions ready if you have any. I'll be happy to... Um, take questions at the end here, but a few things uh, just to think about while traveling, because, uh, you know, many of us don't travel as much after COVID, but we still, you know, the home office may be your new office, or you might do a lot of time at Caribou. Um, this is kind of an easy thing, but something I strongly want you to, to consider is investing in one of these privacy shields that you can just slide over your laptop screen. Um, I can't tell you how many coffee shops and like airport situations I've been in where people leave their huge 17 inch screen laptop open with, you know, reports about mergers and acquisitions, uh, things with, with passwords right there in documents, um, P, you know, uh, personal information, credit cards, all sorts of stuff, just right there. And they leave it wide open while they are, are working away at Caribou. And then they walk across the store, pick up their drink, right? In the meantime, someone could, you know, mess with their machine or just, or just take it and take it unlocked, right? And go through all their work email and their files. Um, it's really nasty. So this, this privacy shield, if you've not seen one of these before, it's really nice because um, if anybody is anything other than dead on, you know, in front of the screen, if you're just a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, it, it makes it all, you know, blurry and dark and you can't read what's on there. Um, and these are, these are cheap too. I mean, these are like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, and I just, uh, I, I try to, to, um, you know, recommend that to people when I can, because, um, not like I'm trying to see things that I shouldn't, but as a security person, when I'm, <laughs> you know, when I'm in row, uh, 29, right by the toilet, right. And I'm looking for, you know, something to, to pass the time. I'll just look in between the seats diagonally and, uh, see that, you know, Oh, what movie are they watching? But often it's not a movie, it's super sensitive data that they're looking at. So I try to do the, hey, maybe you want to get one of these privacy screens so you're not uh, you know, sharing this stuff with the whole wide world. Um, and then speaking of leaving your machine unattended, if you're not already in this habit, I would love to add 
Windows key plus L into your uh, muscle memory. Okay, so when you hit that, that brings up the lock screen on your Windows system, and then you can hit enter and it locks the machine. Um, so given that example of, oh, I'm just gonna get up real quick and grab my coffee from the barista, do the Windows plus L, hit enter, at least lock your workstation so that somebody can't come up and muck with it or just shoulder surf and, and spy on something private. Um, and if you are a uh, if you're a Mac user, I just learned this recently that they have the same sort of thing. It's not quite as easy to remember, but it's uh, Command Control Q that will also just push your Mac system to uh, a lock screen. So you got to come and unlock it with your password or your your fingerprint. Okay, we did it. What time is it? We got like five minutes. We covered a lot. Uh, the two things, if 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 you remember nothing else, right? If you don't remember that I'm a big celebrity, that kind of important stuff, do remember, please, please use an awesome password or passphrase. Make it unique for all of your online things, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, your banking, your 401k, right? And whenever you can, wherever you can, turn on that multi-factor authentication so that you use the little code or the SMS message with the one-time code in it. Um, those two things together, as as you saw from the stat from Microsoft, makes your your accounts 99.9% .9 less likely to get hacked. That's freaking sweet. And then some other things we talked about, have I been pwned.com, P-W-N-E-D, um, to monitor your digital identity. Talked about getting those updates on your PC and using uh, OpenDNS to uh, kind of help your family members well, not go to phishing and scam sites, but maybe not also browse content that they shouldn't. Uh, talked about some ways to back up all the things uh, with Backblaze is the example I used, but uh, you know, just make sure your important data is somewhere else than just sitting right here next to you on your desk. Uh, we gave you some strategies for not clicking bad stuff and uh, talked about a few things we can do to, to work more securely while we're at coffee shops or at... Uh, you know, lounges at the airport. Um, so with that, I know we just have a couple minutes left. I really, really appreciate you tuning in. If you have any comments, questions, I will try to, you know, bring them up here, highlight them on the, the screen. Um, and I will also, while you're thinking of questions, if you want to share any, um, I'll just leave my contact information up. Um, you're welcome to, you know, send me a DM on Twitter, send me an email if you want the handout that goes along with this. So I have a handout with, uh, all the, all the links and, uh, tips just in like a couple page PDF. So I would be happy to, uh, provide that to you. And I'm going to look back. There was a lot of chatter. I'm not sure if there was any questions. Uh, no, I think it most mostly comments. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Jennifer asks, um, let me bring this up here. Is the iPhone password vault secure? So that is not something I've used myself, Jennifer. I've only heard anecdotally that yes, it's been vetted and my security colleagues tend to think, um, a, a, a yay on that one. I just haven't personally um, used it, so I don't want to speak out of turn. Um, if anybody else has, has used it or feels one way or the other, you know, please drop it in the chat. Um, also got a question here from Benny BB says, uh, I wanted to know when are you going to publish the second version? Oh, you're talking about the, the book. Okay, Benny, I don't know if that's really my mom's account that's trying to give me an opportunity to plug uh, some of our stuff. Um, but if, if you, uh, if you are somebody who does like, um, it and, and, um, cybersecurity as a, you know, you want to learn how to offend and defend networks. Um, I will put up a shameless plug. Uh, we do have a $7 book you can buy that, that walks you through how we, um, start hacking networks and also how to defend against them. So, um, the question, yeah, the second version of the book, I am working on it, uh, Benny, and I'm sorry, I'm, uh. It's on my to-do list. It keeps working its way not to the top, but um, I have a lot more stuff I want to bake into it. So I'll I'll get that out as soon as possible. And if you do buy the book for $7.77, you get infinite um, 
updates. So uh, never a bad time to buy it. And again, I'm going to sound like a sales shill. You can get that at ebook.7midsec.com. All right. Well, we're just about at the hour. If there's any other questions, please plop them in here or or email them to me. Really, really appreciate your uh, your time spending an hour uh, with us. I hope this will help at least one person. Uh, to me, if just one person even applies, you know, better password practices or whatever, it uh, gives me the giggities to think, you know, maybe I stopped somebody from getting their account taken over. All right, everybody. Oh, thanks, Benny BB. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks, everybody. It's 2 o'clock, so I'll let you get back to your day. Uh, let us know if we can do anything for you. All right. We'll see you.